Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval. Get out of the big city and experience a construction zone free test drive. There is such a thing. Hello there. I'm uh, Terry DeMonte. And if uh, you're watching on video, you can see that that's Ted Bird on the other side of the screen for me. Hello, Ted Bird and Happy New Year to you. I was going to say, is it too late to say Happy New Year? I guess yeah. if you haven't seen someone in a while, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, we've uh, we're text buddies, but we haven't uh, we haven't hung out for a while. So yeah, Happy New Year! Why not? If it was Easter, it might be a little too late to say Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Lewis, it would be particularly late, I would say. <laughs> I love ever... Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> we always must thank Tommy Schnurmacher for that. Eh? It's such a great, it's such a it great is. word. I don't. Yeah. I, well, I do know what it means now. I know that yeah. it's a holiday on the Next Jewish holiday. calendar. I think it comes around in June or around that time of the year, late spring. Yeah. And Tommy used to say that uh, he hasn't done such and such since Schwuis. <laughs> that was always his time re- time reference. Yeah. I haven't seen that since Schwuis. Yeah, and as a couple of Goyim, we used to hit the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, we, th- we thought we would uh, uh, re-engage, as it were, uh, to let you know what we're up to, because we had intended to already uh, have recorded or begun to record season two of the standing by podcast both ted and i were really pleased that it uh, it had a um, a nice reception i think that would be fair to say and um, a lot of people asked me over the holidays if uh, we were going to do a season two and uh, we had book guests we have some guests we're pretty excited about we won't we won't spoil the surprises uh, but they were booked and ready to go and a lot of people said to me why don't you and ted just do it on the zoom and uh, Ted and I prefer to be in the studio. We have a lot much more fun. Uh, it's inexplicable. A lot much more. A lot much more fun. A lot much more. Yeah. Geez, I could be on the news today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could be a reporter today. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially the six o'clock <laughs> news. Especially the six yeah. o'clock news. Yeah. Me on lead story tonight. There you um, go. We uh, we we uh, we got uh, waylaid by the pandemic is what happened. Uh, everything shut down in Quebec. Uh, we recorded Pantelis's beautiful studios, um, and uh, some of our guests were uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if it was apprehensive, but they just wanted to be careful. So anyway, we've moved we've moved the recording of the second season into February. And we suspect uh, season two will be ready to go in March. And we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. And as Terry says, you know, as easy as it is to do it this way, there's just no substitute for for the two of us sitting across from each other and for having the guest in studio either. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, you can't cop a feel online. <laughs> I, people have asked me about it before, Ted, not the copying the feel, but the, uh, the, the, the chemistry thing. And, and it really is, it's inexplicable. It really is. There's just... There's something about entering a studio, closing the door, watching the red light go on. Um, that's different from this. I mean, this this whole this magic, still works. Yeah, yeah, it, it works fine. But uh, it's separate main shows. As no, they no. Well, I think there's there's I don't think that eye contact and body language factor in online the way that they do in in a room. And it's yeah. just I, I, it's hard to explain. It's innate. Yeah. Yes, but uh, anyway, like I yeah. say, this this still works, and we decided yeah. we'd do some mini podcasts. So, uh, uh, how, was, how was your holiday, other than everybody dying? Uh, the holiday was good. It yeah. was uh, nobody nobody in my immediate circle died. It was oh. only uh, celebrity deaths, and we've Boy. decided that we might do a we do a little death episode. That's pretty dark, but uh, well, listen, you know what? In uh, there were four major passings. Uh, over the holidays, um, one of them just after the holidays, and I thought of the four, there was only one that was that was really sad and tragic, and that was Bob Saget, because yeah. Bob Saget was only 65, and if you're 65, then you'd like to think you have another 20 years left. You and I are both approaching that age, yeah. and I would like to think that we have at least 20 years left. Yeah. Well, I just turned 64, so I was, I was a rock back on my heels by that. I thought, oh my gosh. And it's funny because when you're, you know, 19, you think 65 is, well, he had a good run. Um, But when you're 60 or 58 or, you know, anywhere close, as you point out, Ted, when you're, you know, my age, you'd like to think, knock wood, that, uh, you know, you've got a number of years ahead of you. So it was it was it was quite shocking and quite sad. Yeah. The other three were all uh, I believe they were all in their in their 80s. Well, Betty White was almost 100. Yeah. 
uh, we're recording this on January 18th. I believe today or yesterday would have been her 100th birthday. Yeah. And, and go ahead. The other two were John Madden. The other two uh, very prominent celebrities who passed over the holidays were John Madden and Desmond Tutu, both of whom I believe were in their 80s. But what was remarkable to me was, and it's a measure of how beloved she was, was that uh, Betty White's passing, uh, it almost dwarfed the others. Yeah. It was almost like, you know, John Madden and Desmond Tutu passing away certainly made news, but not to the extent that Betty White did. That was like, <clears throat> pardon me, it was like a, a cultural moment when, when she passed away. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I was in the car with my wife, Jess and Jess said, Oh God. And I said, what? She said, Betty White's passed away. And I, I said, you know, I reacted the same way. I thought how, how cruel, you know, I said, how cruel of, you know, this era 2021, the pandemic and everything, you know, how cruel that Betty White got robbed of her hundredth birthday a couple of weeks before, you know, her, her actual birthday um, you know, the, the, the gods, the Lords, the, whatever, you know, the fates couldn't have let her celebrate her hundredth birthday. And my wife said, there, she was 99. <laughs> you know, she that was, point, yeah. It's just that, numbers that, 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 that was, I thought a measure of, um, of, of what a life she led that we all thought she was robbed after, yeah. you know, after having lived to 99, we, you know, a lot of people thought, Oh God, she got robbed of her hundredth birthday celebration. And we should mention the day after, uh, her actual birthday, which was yesterday, as you pointed out, um, I think millions of dollars. I know here in British Columbia, hundreds of thousands of dollars in BC alone, were dedicated to animal shelters across the province. And my guess is when they divvy it up and add it up all across the world, um, boy, what a, what a legacy she's going to have left behind. And that was all done in her honor and her memory because she was a, uh, she was, was she an animal rights activist? Like she wasn't a PETA no. uh, throw, no. uh, throw blood on a person with a fur coat. No, 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 no. She, she wasn't strident like that, but she was a long time, a uh, defender of, of animal rights and uh, and absolutely advocated for animals at every chance that she got when she was on television talk shows. She became widely known for that later on in her life. And um, and it was I don't know who suggested it, but somebody suggested that to honor her on her birthday, if you made a donation to a local shelter and the thing took off on the Web net like wildfire. So that that's quite a nice gift she left behind. Were you a Golden Girls fan? Did you watch a lot of Golden Girls? You I did. Was, I, did yeah. I did not. I was I was a yeah. Mary Tyler Moore fan. It's not that I dislike Golden Girls. It just for whatever reason it wasn't in my rotation. <clears throat> it was really well written, and uh, I'm lucky. My my wife, who's much younger than I am, uh, but has uh, an old soul and appreciation for uh, things like uh, old television shows, absolutely loves the Golden Girls, and uh, has the complete set here at home and. Uh, when Betty White passed away, we, we spent some time watching some of the episodes and they're very, very funny and they hold up well. I saw a, uh, a blooper reel from, from the Golden Girls. I don't know if you saw that. There were yeah. a couple of them online that were very yeah. funny. Yeah. She was really, really like, what a natural. <laughs> yeah. And cracking up the other cast members yeah. on set, you know? You could see that Betty White's character was... To a large extent, and I think with a lot of the great actors, this is true. Her character, <clears throat> pardon me, to a large extent, is who she was. Yeah, and and so, so it's much not really it, it is acting, but it's not. You know, <laughs> listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> so much I think one of us might expire. <laughs> so much so that apparently the writers, on some occasions, would give her a premise and let her go. Is that right? Yeah, and let her ad lib, and and that was that was where a lot of the bloopers came from because the you know her castmates didn't know what was coming, so that, yeah. that those are fun to find on YouTube. I should say, <clears throat> excuse me, I got very very sick after uh, I returned home after being out east for the holidays, um, and uh, took two COVID tests. Both of them were negative. Um, and uh, I know you're supposed to get a PCR test, blah blah blah, but 
Um, I'm on the mend. And uh, as you know, there's not much they can do for you. You're supposed to stay at home and isolate, which I did. Um, I've uh, had a few gallons of NyQuil and uh, I'm on the mend. But at the tail end of it, I got uh, I got my arse kicked pretty good um, by, I don't know, flu, whatever it was. Um, and, uh, that sort of, it, it worked out. I think Ted, that we had to postpone the podcast because I don't think I would have been well enough to travel this week. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, the, we live, we live in strange times. We and sure it's, do. It's one thing about social media and social media in particular and the internet in general are the best and the worst of everything. Yes. And, and part of where it was so uh, fortuitous to have social media and the internet was, was when these people passed away during uh, a pandemic, when everyone was pretty much locked down, they still got their due because of the internet and because yeah. of social media, John Madden got John Madden was, there's another guy who oh he was, he was who he was, yeah. you know, that, that thing, you know, with the telestrator and the boom and the bang and everything he did when he yeah. was a color commentator, that that wasn't an act. That's who he was. Yeah, that's exactly there, who he was. And I'll bet you he was like that as a coach, too. I'll bet you when yeah. he was drawing stuff up on the chalkboard in the dressing room, he was saying boom and bang and clown and clong. <laughs> yeah, it's a remarkable story. And I really encourage you. I didn't see. I'm sorry to say Fox. I think it was Fox put together a documentary that aired on Christmas Day. And uh, like you, I was busy Christmas Day. Um, and I didn't see it and I haven't been able to find that online, but NFL films did do a documentary, <clears throat> excuse me, of John Madden. That's an hour long. That's available on YouTube and I highly recommend it. It's quite the story of quite a life. I mean, you know, a uh, hard scrabble kid from, a you know, a lower class suburb in, uh, Northern California and the, the journey that he had and the, <coughs> pardon me the the um where he ended up and the legacy that he left it really is an incredible story you can find that on youtube and him and pat summerall were such a perfect complement to each other in the broadcast booth because madden was so animated and so colorful and so entertaining and pat summerall was so understated and and knew how to and this is a lesson for young play-by-play -play announcers uh particularly in in football and I would say in baseball as well, less so in a sport like hockey, where you're constant, where it's constant, like you're constantly describing the play. But in football and baseball, you can let the picture tell the story. Yeah. And Pat Summerall was a master at that. And, and Vin Scully is a master at that. Like Summerall would, you know, the biggest touchdown of the season, Summerall might call it like this. Dorsett. Touchdown Cowboys. And that's all he had to say yeah, because you saw it unfold in front of you. Yeah. And the, the screaming was left to the fans and the yeah. people and the people at home. And I really, really hope that style comes back uh, because some of the play-by-play -play calls I hear and it's subjective. I I'm, maybe a lot of people like, you know, homers who are, are screaming at the top of their lungs and, you know, near choking when they make a, a big call uh, that over the top thing. That's I, I, I would much prefer to watch a game called by Vince Scully or Pat Summerall. Maybe that's generational. Maybe that's, uh, you know, like I said, it's subjective, but I hope that style comes back because it's gone the other way. There's a, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of top 40, uh, want to be rock and roll announcers doing play by play in different sports. And it's, uh, I, I don't know. It's just not my thing. It, do, it doesn't work for me either, but um, uh, but I think for the younger generation, maybe it does work. Other guy, yeah. Otherwise, these guys, you know, the sure. guys and gals now, too, they wouldn't be doing it. There was actually an all-female broadcast team for the Canadians and Phoenix Coyotes. Is that right? A couple of days ago, yeah. It was uh, uh, two females in the booth yeah. and I believe a third uh, down at ice level. So that's another change yeah. uh, that we're seeing in broadcasting. Uh, the other passing uh, of prominence over the holidays was Desmond Tutu, who was, uh, I believe he was the Archbishop of yes. South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know much about him, except that he was a, a highly respected and beloved um, uh, South African and international figure as well. And, <laughs> and when he passed away, it's, it's not, it's, it's not the, the greatest uh, legacy or, or tribute necessarily, but 
I was reminded of a skit that John Moore wrote when we worked back at uh, Mix 96, like 25 years ago. John Moore wrote a skit that him and I did, and it was Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela doing vaudeville. <laughs> <laughs> and the skit went, <laughs> oh, Desmond, <laughs> yes, Nelson, what's round in the middle and high on both ends? I don't know, Nelson, what is round in the middle and high on both ends. Winnie Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> and John and I emailed each other as soon as, as soon as we heard Desmond Tutu had passed away, we emailed each other referencing that. That's, again, not the greatest, uh, not the greatest tribute no. of all time, but, uh, but, but certainly meant with love and respect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, Ted, I didn't, I didn't uh, pre-screen this with you, but we don't have to do that. Somebody asked me on, uh, this has happened a couple of occasions on, uh, on the social media, um, about, uh, how, how Ted and I, how could you be friends with Ted bird with his political views? And, and I, I, I want to address this because this is such a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, bullshit nonsense, uh, stuff that, you and I have never adhere, adhered to. You and I have not always agreed on every single thing that's taken place over the course of our 30 plus year friendship. And I don't know that I've agreed with my close friends, any of them, my buddy, Tim, my buddy, Quentin, my wife, who agrees with somebody all the time. And well, that's when, part of living in a democracy. You're yes. allowed to disagree. And when should that, if you're a good friend, when should that stand in the way of a solid friendship? I just, well, I, think that's a lot of horse shit. Yeah, I would say, I would say it never should. <laughs> but again, uh, the internet and social media has been a game changer. Yes. Uh, there I've, I've had a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I've had a few old friends uh, who have unfriended me because they don't agree with my political views. And it's not like my political views are strident. I'm a get no. a haircut, get a real job conservative. That's all. Yep. yep. That's and, and you're allowed to be a conservative. Yeah. You, I'm not a, you know I'm that. not a card I'm not a card carrying member of the no. conservative party. No. But my but my politics are conservative and, yep. and they're old school. And yep. I'm 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 open to all points of view and I'm open to discussion. You know, I'm not, I try not to live uh, in an echo chamber. And uh, quite frankly, it's, you know, I, it was funny. You said on the, uh, on one of the podcasts in season one, you said that, uh, that I'll go into places on social media that you won't go. And that yeah. and Jess, your wife will often go, Oh, come see this. Look what Ted said this time. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to do, to do less of that because I'm yeah. also, I'm also a big believer in the old adage about there are three things that are personal and are not up for public discussion, sex, politics, and religion. Right. And yeah. that, I, mean, I mean, that horse is all three of those horses left a long <laughs> time ago, but yeah. I think there's still something to be said for that. If you want to avoid conflict. Yeah. And I've described you as uh, as a, a, uh, a, a, you know, a good kind and decent person. You know, some people have referred to my uh, friendship with the prime minister um, and, and you would be on the other side of the political spectrum from the prime minister. But I've explained to people that if Justin and I were to walk in a room, you wouldn't spit invectives at him and throw a beer in his no. face. Of course you, not. I've you, met him. I've met him on a number of occasions. And you would sit down and shake his hand and we would have a beer together. Yeah. He's a, yes. he's a nice guy. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not on side with most of his politics, but he's a nice guy yeah. and I can separate the two. And I wish people would, would understand that. I wish, I wish people would, would understand that, you know, you can, you can disagree, you know, and, and social media has ruined all of this. Yeah, it really you, has. You can, you can disagree with a person. You can say, you know what? I don't see it that way. Um, and, and that doesn't mean you have to, you know, throw your plate of spaghetti on the wall and storm out of the house yeah. and never, and never talk to your friends again. It's, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, it should be, and I learned this oddly enough in Quebec. You know, some of my favorite nights were at a table full of separatists. <laughs> you know, the the kindest, sweetest people that you'd ever want to meet, who really, really believed Canada was a joke and that the Quebec should separate. 
And, uh, you know, we would argue back and forth in both languages. And then, you know, you would at the end of the night, you'd get up and you, you'd be leaving and they'd hug you and say, we, you know, God, that was fun. We have to do this again. I, I, mi I miss that about good old fashioned shooting the shit as yeah. opposed as to, you know, the, the Facebook warriors. And um, I think that, you know, there's an expression that I like that <laughs> the, the Facebook warriors might want to consider and, and take to heart. And that is, do you want to be right? Or do yeah. you want to be happy? There you go. Yeah. There you go. So they, they, for people who have asked, how have we stayed friends uh, all of these years? Um, we, we happen to, uh, we happen to love and respect each other have for a long, long time. And uh, just because Facebook and Twitter has people at each other's throats, um, that's not my definition of friendship. And it certainly isn't yours. I know, Ted. I don't know. No, yeah. not so one there. Day. There. So take that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a there's a a, a a saying that doesn't really work anymore. I stick that in your pipe and smoke it. You know, I was thinking about Who pipes recently. Pipe Nobody <laughs> smokes a pipe anymore. You can, but apparently, I was talking about that on my show. Uh, like, I miss smoking. I really do. do and I? yeah, and I thought to myself, maybe I'll get a pipe and start smoking a pipe. But I won't because I don't want to get mouth cancer or, yeah. or tongue cancer or anything like yeah. that. Uh, but I, you know, I said on the air, can you still get a pipe? Can you still get pipe tobacco? You don't see people smoking them anymore. No. But no. I think there's a place in Montreal called Blatter. Mm -hmm. or bladder and bladder that's a that's a pipe and tobacco shop i got a couple of emails from people saying if you're serious you know go go check them out but i always thought it was quite distinguished and i always enjoyed the smell of pipe tobacco yeah. as well. but don't don't you have to buy a tweed jacket and an mg and, uh, and also one of those sherlock holmes hats hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this I say a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> a what? Is yeah. this the is this the end of our mini podcast? I think so. We've gone okay. at least ten minutes, haven't we? Well, yeah. There you go. That's uh, that's filling the airwaves. Well, yes, not airwaves. They're Zoom waves, I guess. Are they today? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Dude. So gigabytes. Uh, let's uh, let's mention uh, one more time. Standing by the podcast, you can follow us. We have a Facebook page, and we would love if you would go on that Facebook page and like it because apparently that means something. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Twitter page, we'd love you to follow us there too. At uh, Terry Ted podcast. Okay. There you go. Um, and, uh, we even Instagram. have, a, we even have a Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there you go. Um, and, uh, we expect, like I said, we've, we've got, uh, 10, maybe more episodes lined up for season two. And we have a list of people that we think you'd be interested in hearing. Uh, guests that we've invited into the studio. So season two, will have a format of Ted and I opening the show and then welcoming a guest. And we're looking forward to it. We really are. And as soon as uh, these uh, pandemic winds calm down a little bit, uh, we'll get into the studio and get online and let you know where, uh, where you can find it and, and when our launch date is. Tara, thanks for being my friend, even though I'm Augusto Pinochet, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> now those fuckers got to go look up Augusto finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good work. <laughs> Very good, comrade. <laughs> um, a, uh, I guess uh, we'll be uh, texting each other tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. All right, see you later. Bye bye now. Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval, where the luxury is unmistakably British, but nobody wears a top hat or a monocle.